Hey everybody, thanks for checking out my video. So uh, in this uh, tutorial here, I'm just gonna go through creating a basic uh, basic uh, username and password entry box. Uh, it's gonna be written in Python. It's uh, gonna be using TK Enter for the uh, user interface. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's just get started here. So it's this here's gonna be probably about uh, 75 lines of code um, and uh, Essentially, what what it's going to do, it's going to give us uh, just a window, a uh, username field, a password field, and then a login button that when we click or hit enter, it will go ahead and be able to pass our credentials off to the rest of the program to do whatever. So um, we'll just uh, begin here, and I'll go through it as uh, you know as I kind of go. Um, I guess before I start to just some of the functionality that I want out of it. Um, uh, well, well, we'll get to that in a moment. So, um, first things first, I'm going to put my uh, bang line here at the top so it gets my interpreter right as I'm on a Linux machine. So, first thing we'll do here is we'll import TK Enter. We're going to import everything, just makes life a little bit easier that way. So we'll uh, we'll just make a window first, and we'll make sure that that pulls up as we expect. Uh, we'll call that main. Main equals tk. So what this is doing is just generating our window. Um, if I if I show you here, so this is generating our our window. This is um, looping it so it so it creates it for us. So if I run that here. Uh, you can see it's just a blank window, right? All right, so we know it's working so far. What I'm going to want to do now is I do want to make a title for it so they have an idea what's going on. So we're going to do main.title, and then in there we'll just put a string. Call it authentication box. So I'm not going to do this the entire time, but as you can see, uh, now we're called authentication box. Now I want it to open a specific size by default each time. So I'm going to do that doing main geometry. Setting the geometry on the main window. Again, I'm going to use a string. Uh, 225 pixels by 150 should be good. All right. So as of right now, um, we're... Uh, almost ready to go here on our main window. The last thing I'm going to want to do to define my main window is um, I, I'm going to be using the grid, uh, the grid layout manager here. So I'm not uh, you in in versus uh, I I could use pack, but grid grid gives you a really granular. Uh, granular control as to how your your interface is going to look and feel. So. Typically how I do things, uh, you could define each cell that you're going to be using. Um, I want to define all of them right away and give every cell I'm going to need a weight um, prior to even placing anything. For me, that's a little bit easier to place my widgets and, and everything else like that. So i um, just going to use a simple for loop to give every cell in a 50 by 50 grid a weight of one, which will allow me to show white space in between my widgets. Without doing that, without defining a weight to each cell, uh, it's it's not going to be able to show white space. If I put something in row five and the other thing in row twenty, it's going to show right next to each other because it's not going to display the white space. So, uh, to do that, I'm going to I'm going to declare a variable rows. Um, it can really be anything. Make that equal zero. So while rows is less than 10, I'm going to use row configure. So it's going to configure the rows on the main window. That's going to be rows, which, uh, which is going to be each individual one. And I'm going to give it a weight equals 1. Oops, sorry, equals 1. So I'm going to do that for both rows and columns. 
And then add one here. So what this is going to do is going to use uh, use the integer zero for the uh, for the contents of rows. So what this is saying is main. Uh, so configure the rows in the main window, um, and specifically configure row well zero. It'll be the first time. Give it a weight of one. Same thing with the columns. Do it in the main. Uh, configure the column in main window column zero. Give it a weight of one, and then we're going to loop that through um, up to ten. So zero through nine gives us ten. So we'll have a ten by ten grid. So as of right now, um, our main window is pretty much defined uh, how it's how it's going to behave. Uh, so this is what it's going to pull up. It's going to be the size it's going to look. Obviously, it's going to have wi uh, widgets in it, but we'll, we're going to define those. So in addition to allowing us to show white space, what this is also going to do is it's going to allow our widgets to scale if we make the window bigger. Um, uh, again, you could leave it a fixed size. I typically, well, it all depends, but I don't... Uh, I don't usually fix the size of my windows. I allow them to be resizable, so I usually like them to scale. So what we'll do first, uh, we'll create our username box. Um, so down here, we'll, we'll define a box. And what we're gonna uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the entry widget, and we're going to attach that to the main window. So the entry widget is going to reside in the main window. Then what I'd like it to do is I'd like it to say something indicating that's a username field. I could make a label to do this uh, and and have that above or below or to the side of the widget. Um, for this example, I'm just going to put it right on the inside. So to define that I'm going to insert text in there so username box dot insert and zero and the text we want to insert enter username cool so the other two things that I want to do and this is this is gonna come in uh, this is really gonna come to play later is when I'm gonna add the functionality um, and you'll understand what I'm talking about but I want to I want to be able to tell when the user focuses on the widget and when the user loses focus out of the widget the reason being is because I don't want to have the user have to delete the text that we're putting in right here I don't want to have them have to highlight and delete it I want them when they just go in I want them I, I want the the program to delete it out automatically now in addition to that if the user exits the username field prior to putting anything in I want it to repopulate this default text so um, I need to know when it gains, when the widget gains focus, or when the widget loses focus. So to do that, um, we just bind those functions in there. So username box dot bind. That's going to allow us to bind something to it. I'm going to bind focus in. So this is going to be able to detect when we initiate focus on the widget. And um, right here is where we'll put the function to call. Um, I'm going to put, uh, I know what I'm going to name it. So clear widget is what's going to be called. It shows up, you know, with a red underline here because clear widget doesn't exist yet. The function clear widget doesn't exist yet. But we're going to create that in a moment. Again, we're going to want to also bind when the user loses focus. So as you can see, focus in, you can probably guess it's focus out. Is what we'll need to bind to. And this one is going to be repopulate defaults. That's the function it's going to run when this when this happens. Okay? So at this point, now we want to place it somewhere. So we're going to uh, pass it through grid it's the manager we're going to be using and uh, I want to place it in row 1 row equals 1 column 5 column equals 5 
And I also want it to stick to the top and the bottom. Uh, I want to take up as much space as it will allow to the top and the bottom. So that's uh, using the sticky option. Sticky equals... Uh, and it, it runs on direction. So the top of your screen, up is north, bottom is south, east is right, west is left. So I'm going to use that uh, sticky option here. So... Before I run this, I'm assuming we're going to get an error. Yes, we get an error because clear widget and repopulate defaults is not defined. So let's go ahead and let's uh, let's define those right away. So up here, I'm going to define my function clear widget. And we have to uh, allow one argument, which is going to be the event. It's going to be the focusing in or the focusing out. So... Um, and in here, we're going to place an if statement, and I'm actually just going to paste that in here, and I'll explain exactly what it does. So, if username box right here, so this is this is uh, the username box widget equals main dot focus get right. So so what this is doing is it's gathering what widget has focus. And this is going to return an integer. If username box matches that integer and the uh, contents of username box is enter username, what it's going to do is going to clear out the widget. Okay? So what this allows us to do is when the focus is put on the widget, it clears it out, clears all the contents, right? So as I said before, if the user already put in what their contents are I don't want it to clear out whatever's in the box like I said if they already have something in there but I want it to repopulate the defaults if they didn't put anything in right so um, that's where we need the repopulate defaults function so I'll define that here And again, it's going to have to accept the event as an argument. And again, just going to paste in the logic here, and I'll explain that. So again, if uh, whatever widget is focused on is not username box, right? So if that widget is not focused on and the contents are a string of nothing if there's nothing in there then let's re-put back the defaults that we had in there right let's let, let's put that back in there because obviously it didn't enter anything so we'll want to continue to let them know that it's the username box and what we're expecting there um, uh, so 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 we'll need to do that now I think this is a good point to run it so you can see exactly what is going on so we're running it as you can see we only have the username box if I click in here it clears it out if I click out of here oops actually I can't click out of here right now because I don't have another widget and I can't tab so you just have to trust that if I were to click out of here it would it would repopulate I uh, so what we'll do here um, I'll put in a password box bind that to some functions and uh, place that on there and we'll show you exactly what it's going to do so I'm going to just paste in that code here so I'll just go through this with you what this is doing here is this is defining the password box and one thing to note here is this right here the show and then in parentheses star so what that is saying is whatever text is put in here capture the text but only display back this character because we don't want to echo back whatever the password actually is we just want to echo back that the fact that there was a character that's put in so we put the stars in um, and what I wanted to do was have a couple spaces in there just to indicate that it's probably a password field considering it's asterisk out right so we'll put a couple spaces in there just to let them know that something's in there again we're binding the focus in and focus out okay now I'm gonna stop here and we're gonna return back to those uh, to those functions right so right now it's only configured these functions are only gonna work properly on the username box 
we have to also add in um, an if statement for the uh, for the password box, right? So I'm going to put in this elif statement. So else if the password, but basically the exact same logic is going on right up here. Um, oops, this is actually yeah, no, this is the right one. Um, uh, the exact same logic that's going on up here is going on down here. It's just tailored to the password box, considering there's some different uh, different parameters that need to be taken taken account of. So again, we're going to do that with the clear widget function as well. So have our elif statement in here, and what this is going to do is this is going to clear out our password box if we put focus on it right so um, returning back down here to our password box defining it what this is doing right here this this one right here is is binding the return key to call a login function now we haven't defined that yet so I'm just gonna delete that out of there we we, we don't we don't want anything to, to actually no what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just comment it out makes life easier that way so as of right now don't worry about this but this is this will bind the return key to call another function you know do a callback just like these are right so then we're putting it on our grid uh, row 2 column 5 again making it sticky north and south so it takes up as much space top and bottom I'll run that for you here and we'll easily be able to see what's going on so uh, as you can see right here is our showing our asterisks as we expect when I click into the username box clears it out now I'm gonna hit tab go down to the password box it repopulates the enter username and clears out the uh, the password I'm gonna tab again it re puts in that default password and it's gonna do that infinitely until I type something so I'm gonna type my username tab it over it never deleted it now I'm gonna type my password so if I tab back and forth, it's never going to get rid of them again because I put something in there and that if elif statement is handling all of that. So uh, go ahead and close out of here. Um, so far, doing so good. So at this point, um, we're going to want to uh, put in our login button, right? So our because uh, we're going to want to enter our username, password, and then click our login button. So I'm going to go ahead and paste the code in for that. Putting that in, as we can see, um, this is defining here. Um, this is using bu uh, the button module here. So uh, what it, essentially what this is doing is it's putting it in the main window again. Um, the text that the button is going to display inside of it is login. And then when the button is clicked, it runs this command, um, which which is essentially a callback, um, and it it's just going to call back to a, a login. Uh, the 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 login function is what it's going to run. Again, we're binding the return key to login again here. So, uh, lastly, as you can see, we're we're ju we're just gridding it out, um, and we're making it sticky. Um, on all sides so it, it takes up as much space as it can now I I, I want to explain what's going on here in line 46 and in line 41 we're binding the return key in both of them because the function that this is gonna give us is if my if my focus is set in the password box and I hit enter I hit the return key it's going to do the login and if I tab and my focus is on the login button it's also and I hit the return key it's also going to call the same thing right and lastly if I click the button it's going to call the same function okay so uh, I don't want to do it in the username field because more than likely that's going to be premature um, if they hit enter so um, the only time I want to add that functionality is when they're in the password or highlighted on the the login button um, so here's the one little caveat with doing this we're calling the same function on a key bind and on on a regular button callback so if we take a look up here we bind a single event to uh, to these repopulate defaults and clear widget functions okay that's because the only time uh, the only time they're gonna be run is through a key bind okay the 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 there's no button that's going to trigger this right so we only need one uh, we, we only need one argument right so because we're doing it from a 
a button click callback and a keybind callback, we need to just define our functions slightly differently. So I'm going to paste in my login function here. And if you take a look right away, the one thing that should stand out to you is the argument, right? So I put a star in front of there. That means you can have as many arguments as you want. Um, so it's, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to throw an error. If we were to only have one argument allowed here, um, it would throw an error. And I'll demonstrate that here in a second. So at this point, we're pretty much ready to go. Um, just a brief overview of the code here. Um, again, making our main window, defining our grid, putting our username and password boxes, and defining their properties, and putting in our button and defining its properties. So if you run that right now, username, password, login, okay, we go cycle up all up on those hit the login button and it returns back what we had for our username and password so my user my password so it what now what's happening when i click that is it's running up here and this function is printing out uh, the string username and then this right here is saying username box dot get what, what this is is this is saying get the contents of you uh, of the username box in its current state again with the password box you could assign this to a variable but actually you would probably want to assign it to a variable if you were going to be calling uh, another function um, oh you might or might not but in this case I'm not not a big deal so if we take a look here, essentially this is this is the entirety of the program. Um, and this is the entirety of, of of what we want. The only thing we would need to modify, um, if we uh, if we did this, would be these lines right here. Essentially, we would call another function instead of printing it out, and we would pass the username and password arguments um, to that function because they would need it. So. Here I'll show you what's going to happen is if we get rid of this event here. So so if, so if we get rid of that asterisk, right? So I'm going to uh, just put in username and password, hit login. Now I clicked the login. Now that's uh, very specific. I clicked the login button. Make sure you know that. So and it says it takes exactly one argument. Zero were given. Well, what do you mean zero were given? I click the button, right? Well, when the button is clicked, this is the code that's that that, that it's referencing right here. This command equals login. It's not a keybind, so there's no event actually happening right here. There's no event with right here. There is an event, right? So if I go back to my window, okay, I, I'm going to close it just so you you know if it gives an error. So username, password, I hit enter, and it works because it's expecting exactly one event right here, and it, it received one because I hit enter, and it, uh, it, it gave it that, key, that keyboard event was the event. So I have to put that asterisk here so it allows for a event or no event, right? So again, up here, uh, just put username, password, um, enter, it works and username password click it works so at this point right now we're pretty much ready to go uh, uh, this uh, this code here um, is uh, we can throw this into a function if we want or or we can add this to our program however we want to do it um, but this is going to give us a just a basic login box that we can put um, my uh, we can call another function. So, so how would we call another function? I'll just, that's the last thing I'll show you here. Um, what I'll do, um, is just how I would do it: username uh, equals the username box get dot get. So it's going to be the contents of the username box, and password will equal the contents of the password box. And then right here we would just call our function. So we would uh, my other function, and it would be expecting a username and password parameter, right? So now my other function doesn't exist here, but 
this is how your code would probably look if you needed to run your other function, right? So uh, lastly, I don't know if I uh, explain this. What this is doing is killing the window. It's just close. It's it's destroying the window, and it it'll go away. Um, so you can just get rid of it. The user doesn't have to you know manually close it or anything. So um, uh, yeah, like I said, just basic basic login login button so um, again uh, you know thanks thanks again for watching if you like it um, please uh, please like and subscribe um, also I will put a link to this code um, which is located on my website so I'll have a link in the description uh, where you can just copy and paste this code and use it for yourself so um, if you have any questions or anything feel free to uh, drop a comment I'll get to them uh, get to them as I can thanks again for watching